The clocks have changed, the days are getting longer and the roads are drying out and the weather is warming up. You've done your winter miles and now it's time for those summer smiles. In the same way that you don't have to go out dressed like the Michelin man anymore, there are some key changes that you can make to your bike to get the most out of your summer riding. I'm going to run you through everything that you need to do to make sure that your bike is in tip top condition and of course 100% safe after all those months of muck and grime. I'll also show you how to make sure that you're getting the maximum speed and efficiency out of your machine. Everybody knows that clean bikes go faster and crucially, they're easier to inspect. So your very first job should be to get rid of all of that salt and winter crust. You probably have your own bike cleaning routine, but if you are a bit of a soap dodger, then don't worry, it is very, very easy. While well recommended, you don't need a jet wash or specific bike cleaning products. A bucket of hot water and some ordinary household washing up liquid will do just fine. Just make sure you start at the top of the bike where it's hopefully cleaner and then you finish with the drivetrain where most of the crud is. When you do reach the drivetrain, make sure you use some degreaser on the chain and cassette because being super thorough here really pays off. But do be sure to make sure you rinse it thoroughly as well, especially where you have used that degreaser. A new bucket of clean water will be ideal. And also make sure you spend a little bit of time just letting it air dry and then run it over with a dry cloth. Once you've done that, that's the time to re-loop. All of the abrasive grit and grime that comes from winter roads is really hard on brake pads and braking surfaces and it wears them down so much faster compared to when you're riding in dry conditions. If you're on rim brakes, it's really easy to check the wear of your brake pads. Some have a wear indicator line, but if they don't, then just check whether your pads still have their vertical grooves. If they're worn flat, then they're nearing the end of their life and it's probably time to replace them. If the grooves are still there, then run a small flathead screwdriver up and down them to scrape out any of the debris and any little sharp bits. It's also not uncommon for rim brakes to pick up little bits of metal from the rim and the road. And obviously that can cause an accelerated amount of wear on the rims themselves. For disc brakes, clean your rotors with isopropyl alcohol and shine a torch on your calipers to get a better look at pad wear. If you've got less than a millimeter left, then it's time to change them. If you're using Shimano rotors and they're less than one and a half millimeters thick, then change them too. You might need a set of vernier calipers just to get a precise measurement. Alternatively, if the thickness of the rotor here feels thinner than it does here, that's also a really good indication that it's on its last legs. Also, be sure to pay attention to the lever fill. If you're on disc brakes, is there too much travel in the lever before they bite? Do they feel squishy? They might need bleeding. It's not always a tricky job to do, but if you're unsure, then just go visit your local bike shop. Rim brake users, if your levers are feeling sticky, rough, or the calipers don't spring open again when you release the lever, you're probably looking at a new set of cables to restore full smoothness. If that doesn't work, then the calipers themselves may need a full disassembly, clean, re-grease, and rebuild. If you're going to be using the same wheels for both summer and winter riding, be sure to give them a really proper inspection when you're checking out the brakes. If you are on rim brakes, then check out the braking surface. You don't want it to feel too concave when you run your finger over it. If it's excessively worn, then you should seriously consider replacing the rims. Worn out rims exploding under braking is not something that anyone should experience. Happily though, that's not a problem with disc brakes. Check there's no play in the hub bearings by grabbing the wheel when it's in the dropouts and try and move it from side to side. If there is play, the sealed cartridge bearings have to be replaced. But if you have cup and cone style bearings, then they can be adjusted with some cone spanners. On to tires, make sure that there's no serious cuts or embedded flints in the rubber. You can pick up a lot of those during winter. Ideally though, how about swapping to some lighter, faster summer rubber? Lower rolling resistance and a lower rotating weight is a really easy way to go faster for the same amount of effort and it improves ride feel no end. 
Replacing the harshness of winter rubber with summer plushness is such a joy. And if you're lucky enough to have a set of summer wheels or racing wheels, ideally with deep section carbon rims, then happy days, you're gonna go even faster. On the subject of bearings, unbolt your stem, drop out your fork, and have a really good look at the condition of your headset bearings. It's always worth cleaning and re-greasing them. If they look and feel like they've seen better days, then just replace them. Check your bottom bracket bearings too. If there's play or the crank simply won't spin freely when the chain's off, or it's making the dreaded creaking noise when you're riding, the assembly will need some attention. Obviously, it depends what type of bottom bracket you're using, so we won't go into disassembly details here. But no one wants to be riding with a creaky bottom bracket, and no one's gonna want to ride with you either. The seat post and saddle are another potential source of really nasty noises, especially if you're not a mudguard user. They will have sat in the direct line of rear wheel spray all winter. So undo the seat post clamp bolt and remove the post from the frame. Now, this is a really good chance to check that the seat post itself hasn't become seized within the frame and that it comes out with relative ease. Give the seat post and the inside of the frame a really good wipe down with a clean rag and then apply some fresh grease or carbon paste if you've got any carbon components in your setup. Saddle rails themselves can also corrode and pick up so much grit and start creaking. So it's really worth taking the saddle out, giving the rails a really good clean, putting a dab of grease on them and then refitting it. The drivetrain is the part of the bike that will have borne the full brunt of winter riding as it's completely exposed to the elements. Of all the parts of the bike that you've checked so far, the chain is the thing that's most likely to need replacing. So you can use a chain checker to see how it's worn and therefore how much it's stretched. Generally, when it gets to 0.5% of elongation, you should change it. Let it get too far and you will need to replace your cassette and chain rings and that is a whole lot more expensive. The teeth on your chain rings shouldn't be too pointed or shark fin shaped, but what about changing the ratios to be more in tune with the riding you'll be doing in summer compared to what you've been doing all winter? For example, if you're heading to the Alps, you might want a wider ratio cassette than you've been using for your winter local lanes riding. That way, you're spreading the wear as well as fine-tuning your equipment. Last, but by no means least, change your bar tape. If it's ratty, just rip it off. New bar tape can give a bike a huge lift. It's well known that pro mechanics change the bar tape for their riders all the time, and it gives them a psychological boost, safe in the knowledge that their bike is in pristine condition. It is, of course, the first thing that you see when you look down. Before you sprint off into the sunset on your fresh summery steed, have one last thing about the effect that your winter riding has had on you as a rider. Have you become a more efficient peddler? Perhaps you've lost a little bit of weight around the waist. Bike fitters will often suggest to a rider who's not quite race fit that they should put an extra spacer under their stem while that extra timber is there and getting in the way. But have those winter miles actually turned you into a lean, mean racing machine? If that's the case, then throw away that spacer, slam your stem, and enjoy a summer of fast aero riding. Have you got your own routine for getting your bike summer ready? If you think we've forgotten anything, then drop it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I will see you again very soon.